Hello everyone, my name is Carrie, and I will be presenting on the Shelby tube sampling method. First, let's get into some background information. So what exactly is a Shelby tube? Well, it is a thin-walled tube with one end that acts as a cutting edge and another that acts as the attachment point for the sampler head. The picture on the right shows the Shelby tube with the sampler head attached on top. Shelby tubes are 3 or 4 inches in diameter and about 30 inches long. Shelby tubes are used for collecting intact and mostly undisturbed samples of fine-grained soils, like clays or silts. The collected samples are then tested for either chemical analyses, like nutrient or metal analytes, or for geotechnical analyses, like hydraulic conductivity and permeability. Before using the Shelby tube, there are some things that are important to know. Any large particles, such as gravel or concrete, at or near the surface of the soil must be removed before use. The depth measurement of the sample begins at the top of the soil horizon. As for material, the Shelby tube can be made of steel, stainless steel, galvanized steel, or brass. However, if the sample is being collected for chemical analyses, then the Shelby tube must be made of stainless steel. If the sample is being collected for geotechnical analyses, then any material is fine. Finally, if you are sampling for volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, or if the area is suspected or known to have any VOCs, then you must be sure to follow the EPA's method 5035, which has varying instructions depending on the data quality objectives of the study and or VOC detection levels. In order to use the Shelby tube, it must first be attached to a string of drill rod and lowered into the borehole. This can be seen in image 1 to the side. Then, the sampler is pressed into the undisturbed soil by steady hydraulic force. In image 2, the Shelby tube is being pressed down into the soil by this force from the machine pictured. Finally, once the tube has collected its sample, it is brought back up to the surface where the tube containing the sample is removed from the sampler head. Image 3 shows the Shelby tube with the sample inside. If the sample was collected for chemical analyses, then the soil within the tube is removed for sample acquisition. If the sample was collected for geotechnical analyses, then the tube is capped and sent to a geotechnical laboratory. This image shows the Shelby tube sampling technique from within the soil. The Shelby tube is lowered into the borehole, then pressed down into the soil to retrieve the sample, and then brought back up to the surface with the soil sample inside. This concludes my presentation on the Shelby tube sampling method. Thank you!